uppercut, uppercut, sonic boom! Well, hello there, humans and earthlings. Hope you are where, if you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Welcome back to Channel on Bush. They're coming to you live from the hotel room in Vilnius, Lithuania. Uh, today, I want to talk about gun depression. Uh, it's probably the most, well, as a stat, for me personally as a player, this is the stat that has influenced my gameplay more than any other. Gun depression is a double-edged sword that not a lot of people really pay attention to when they're playing. The majority of the player base just sees gun depression as, well, I can shoot further down. So if I sit on a hill, then I can shoot without getting hit more often. And that's a great basic way of looking at gun depression. But gun depression is actually so much more important than that. Uh, for instance, we're going to talk firstly about this tank here, the Centurion 701, and then we're going to have a look at the STB, which is really the prima ballerina of, of gun depression mediums. The gun depression is a double-edged sword. I mentioned this already. So it not only does it allow you to get above a target when you fire so that you look slightly down at them, which increases the angle of anyone firing back at you if they're looking at your upper glacis or your turret armor. So you're more likely to get a bounce and more likely to be able to put shots out and not take shots back, which is called a good trade. And that's what you should be aiming to do in your gameplay is make good trades where you put a shot in and the enemy doesn't, or at least you get multiple shots in and the enemy only gets one. It also allows you to maximize your DPM because there are far fewer situations where you can't shoot. And as we see the start of this game being very, very slow, we're not really utilizing gun depression here. What we're utilizing is a strong turret. Uh, but the reason it maximizes your DPM is, is you're gonna come across all kinds of different terrain in Blitz. It's not a flat arena. It's in fact an arena where there is an awful lot of people running around with, uh, you know, hiding behind berms, on top of hills, down ravines, in cap circles, behind little bits of concrete, whatever the case may be, as the Yamato's 18 inches pop out in the background. And that means that if you don't have gun depression, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, go and drive a Chinese medium tank and see how you go with that absolutely horrific amount of gun depression you will often be in situations where you quite simply can't shoot a tank that's 10 meters in front of you because there is a slight rise in the ground. You never come across that in a Sense 701 or an STB. Or if you do, it's, it's in such a disastrously large and crazy kind of incline that obviously there's no way to overcome it. What you've got to be very careful of when you're driving a gun depression tank though is that you can serve hit points because gun depression tanks one of the the things that people don't really think about when they look at the game is balance like how there's the scissors rock paper of world of tank splits right so if you have a tank that doesn't have gun depression there are generally a lot of things that that tank does have uh let's take for instance like those aforementioned chinese medium tanks well they have excellent upper glaciers so they have excellent turrets they are well armored vehicles. Your gun depression tanks, your STBs, your Centurion 701s, they tend to be very, very tough on top, the ones that are successful, and very, very soft underneath. Uh, think of a 62A versus, say, uh, Leopard 1. The Leopard 1 is all about speed, accuracy, and gun depression. The FV4202 is another great example of a. Uh, of an excellent tank that probably doesn't get the credit it deserves. I've seen people talking on Reddit about how the FV4202 is a weak tank, and I'm just baffled by this idea. The FV4202 has one of the best upper glacises of any medium in World of Tanks Blitz. It also has one of the best uh, turrets of any medium with a gun like that and that kind of DPM output. Like an FV4202 firing Hesh has the most insane damage per minute that you're ever gonna find in water tank splits. If you're running that thing with Hesh and a gun ram, you can get it up to over 4,100 damage a minute, 4.1K DPM if you get behind someone. And that's why 
the 4202 in the hands of someone who's really good is pretty spectacular, or indeed in the hands of someone who's just been driving it for a long time. And then you look at tanks like the Sense 7 and 1, and there's one of the reasons I love this tank so much is, and it's suffered a lot. For, for reasons unknown, I don't know why. The matchmaker, it's very rare to get a game like this where you are tier 9 and you are top tier. For the most part, for me, when I'm playing the Scent, I'm always trying to conserve hit points because you are in tier 10 games. And in tier 10 games in this tank, you end up being a 2500 DPM medium tank that's quite slow and has armor that is excellent at bouncing shots from tier 8 and 9 tanks when hull down and using its gun depression. But versus, I mean, if you're against a Jaegeru or a... Minotaro or, or something like that, or even, you know, an IS-4, they're just going to pen you. They, they can go through your turret, okay? And that's why I find it a really challenging tank to drive. And we're going to get to the STB-1 in a second. I'm going to talk a little bit about how, as we correctly use cover there to set up that shot on the 130. Um, and we've been holding onto our hit point pool the entire time so that we can now start pushing, which is important. One of the biggest problems with the gun depression tanks is you don't have that ability to brawl head to head versus same mobility targets. So you've got to hold your, your hit point pool far tighter because if you don't hold your hit point pool, then you can often end up in situations at the end of a game where you don't have the opportunity to actually win the game. So, when you're looking at tanks to drive, if you're a new player, you should absolutely consider gun depression, mediums, and heavies as a great entry into World of Tank Splits. They are the kind of tanks that allow you to be useful in far more terrain and across a lot more maps. I did a Reddit AMA yesterday. In fact, I haven't checked it, but there was a lot of people on Reddit who asked me questions. And uh, I'm checking it, the holy balls is uh, like, wow, there's a lot. There's a lot of people who have asked questions. Um, I might even do a video on it. it sounds like fun. Uh, and I think one of them was about comp makeup. Now, when you're in a competitive team, you can run the perfect tanks for that map. You might find people on here would run a couple of object triple sevens because they're so low to the ground with good turret armor that they can hold a position behind specific berms that will give a crossfire to other members of the map, other members of the team on the map. But you don't have that luxury in public games, in random games. And that's why tanks like this, the STB, are so fantastic. Gun depression tanks with a strong turret and excellent DPM, and the STB one has over 3,200 DPM, uh, and good mobility, that all adds up to a tank that can perform well on an awful lot of different maps. You can hide your relatively weak lower glacis, move around the map, and constantly, consistently output damage. And if you are looking at selecting a tank and choosing a, a vehicle that is going to... Where the hell did that go? That is going to successfully allow you to be you know, an excellent part of the, the team in all terrain and across all maps, especially as a new player, then a, a tank like the STB-1 is brilliant. Other tanks that you might find, like premium tanks, for instance, like the Chimera, uh, is an outstanding idea with this in Tier 8, where you can farm credits and you can play a medium heavy or a heavy medium. Uh, you can play a peekaboom tank, uh, and you can do it all with gun depression. Chieftain Mark 6s. Uh, these, are, these are tanks that can perform across a wide variety of different engagements. And in Blitz, versatility is almost a stat. It's, it's so important to be able to output damage with, and you know, both spot your own targets and defeat your own targets. Be able to handle a 1v1 engagement. And that's why I think gun depression for me remains the most important stat in Blitz. Uh, there are so many amazing players out there and if you give them gun depression and that's all you really need to give them. Just gun depression and a decent gun that has good DPM and allows them to get involved and 
the next thing you know, they're cracking, you know, 3k per game and having a wonderful time, and that's all you really need. Anyway, I'm Bushka. Thank you so much for, uh, for that. I might even go through and do a video on the Reddit AMA, um, because I'm still stuck in this hotel room, hotel room in Vilnius, and I think that might be a little bit of fun. And, uh, yeah, just remember to like the video, subscribe, make sure you tune in for the Blitz Summer Cup EU stream, which I'm going to be doing, I think it's Sunday night. Um, that's going to be great. Uh, the details of that will be on the portal and on the in-game portal. So open your client and follow the links. And uh, yeah, I'll be there. You'll be there. We'll all have a good time. Until next time, look after yourself. Stay safe on Z Battlefield. And bye for now.